In this video, we'll see an example of how we can combine different curve filters here together in order to achieve a certain effect or deal with a certain animation problem that would be tricky or time consuming to do manually. What we see we've got here is we've got a piece of motion capture that's been retargeted, in this case to a rigget rig. And it's all pretty good, you know, the, the mocap transfer has worked out nicely. However, what we can see is that these foot goal nulls here have got a little bit of sliding on them. Sometimes this can be an issue with the retargeting. More commonly, it's down to having a little bit of slide on the actual source motion itself. And when, of course, the motion gets transferred to a newly proportioned character, you can wind up with essentially an amplification of those faults. With, of course, so many folk using Kinect-based capture methods or other tools like iPySoft motion capture, it's certainly not uncommon to see some foot sliding going on in the captured motion. Even if the capture overall is pretty good, a little bit of inaccuracy with ground contact is a very common feature. So, of course, you could go in and start keying things and deleting ranges of frames in order to fix these feet and make them solid, but that would be rather time-consuming to do. So, we're going to do it by the use of a couple of curve filters here. If we look at the graphs for these two foot goal nulls, we can see where the slide is occurring. It's in areas pretty much like this, where clearly this is meant to be a hold and this little run is supposed to be a movement, but the hold isn't perfectly flat. There's a tiny amount of drift going on there. The first thing then that we want to do is clean up this curve a bit so that we can operate on it better. Specifically, we want to reduce all of the keyframes down to try and get cleaner transitions across these hold points. And we can do that using the Reduce Smart tool. So with that open, we'll just start dialing in a value here. Oh, we can see that that's far too strong, so let's decrease our sensitivity there. There we are, it's a little better, still quite strong. Let's have a look at version 3. That's a bit better, we're losing some detail there, maybe that's supposed to be a long hold, maybe not. Let's try it at two. Okay, and there we're getting something that is a better representation of our original curve. So let's okay that, just have a quick view of our animation there to make sure that it is more or less correct. Obviously this is all TCB, so we're still getting drifting, but we can see that we haven't introduced any errors there. We haven't wrecked the motion in any way, so that's pretty good. So we'll apply that, which fixes that motion in there. The next thing we're going to use then is the flatten holds. We don't want such a tiny, tiny value because we want these values which are probably different from one another to actually catch up. So let's try it, shall we, at point 001. Very little or no change there. Let's try it again, this time at just point 0.01. That would, of course, be sensitive to changes of up to 10 millimeters. Again, not much there. So we'll just try it at point 0.1, which would be 100 millimeters. Of course, you could go and look at the graph to find out what the sort of maximum displacement you're getting is. Aha, and we see there that now we're getting some steady, flattened out hold sections like that. All of this is looking pretty good in a graph sense. So we can come over to our actual animation here and start having a look. And there we see we have indeed got pretty solid feet. When they touch down, they are staying locked properly in place. So that's really good. So we'll hit apply. That locks those changes in. As a result of that now, we've probably got some redundant keyframes in there. So I'll just run a quick clean on it, which gets rid of those. And there we go. We've taken slightly drifty feet from our mocap transfer there and very quickly and easily just been able to lock them down and improve things quite a lot. We of course look through it, see if there's any other small errors that the filters haven't quite caught, far easier to now clean up manually since we've got such a great keyframe reduction. So there we see simple little technique on how you can use curve filters to perform a handy little task that might be called for quite often during animation and mocap cleanup.